Oh, Paul, isn't it great to get away from the station for a bit? Especially if we could get down to East End or the market to do a bit of shopping. Yeah, it's great just to get out and about, you know, catch a bit of life on the street, so to speak. And uh, I'm going to keep an eye out for some bits and pieces as well, you know. Got to get your nibbles. Oh, look, there's a street performer over there. I love street performers. Yeah, but isn't that your uh, Nicholas next to him there? Oh, yeah. With the guy over there with the top hat. He must be here with his mum, Nicky. She's sending her cupcakes or something. I love them cupcakes. Oh. Whoa, we'll have to get some. Hey, let's have a bit of a listen, see what he's going on about. Hey, yeah, okay. you want a salad? I'll have corned beef. Even that sounds creepy. How can somebody make corned beef sound creepy? Yes, they do. Corned they do. beef? Hey. What the hell's he going on about corned beef? I love corned beef, Paul. <laughs> you must admit, I do like a corned beef cob now and again. Corned beef hash, lovely. <laughs> Paul, watch out for that droid. He's been selling our Ewok scrub. Oh, hello, lads. I'm glad I've managed to catch you. That Ewok scrub has been going lovely. Tell you what, it works a treat if you leave it to ferment a bit. Ah, well, here's your money. Good day. See you later. And if you get any more, bring it round back of the house. Mrs. Eats the skis. smell of it. Goodbye. Now we've got some money. Let's get your nibbles, Paul. I Great. Life on another planet. Hello. How low. It's underneath your face. But I can hear yours. Blood searing, beating. That stubborn little muscle. Inside your hmm. face. Looks pretty good in his top hat. What a dapper chap. Neck. I tasted life on another planet. I know that note got slightly creepy then, didn't it? I turned it to my ventriloquist look. This one, look. <laughs> try it, try it. Now, when a policeman ever stops you, if he does, and asks you where you're going, don't do this to him. Have you got anything to say? <laughs> I am but limited by language, officer. What would you like me to say? Well, I realise that you turned down that road a little bit quick. Do you realise that there are street cameras in the area? I thought I was doing 28 miles an hour. Do you have anything to add to that? I'm afraid I do, officer. So, would you please expand? <laughs> It's very wordy, isn't it? Yeah. But it's, edu it's educational for the kids. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very whimsical, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, Mr McDuggan, uh, do you have anything for spores, moulds and fungus? Whoa, Paul, hold this. Is this cream for the fungus? No, that's from the salad. This baseball bat and mildew removal will take care of it. What's the baseball bat for? Them Endorian mites. They're a bugger to get rid of. Right, OK. I think I've got the swing of things. Not showing beating that stubborn little muscle. Oh, Paul, I'm just going to get the captain's CD and mind me to give him a card. Perhaps we get him on the show or something. Hmm, something different, I definitely. found it. I tasted life on another planet. Here we go, we're nearly there, Nicholas. I found it. I tasted life on another planet. Ba da 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 da. There are no wrong notes in my show. It's like jazz. All the wrong notes in the right places. There's no pressure on you. You can be progressive if you like, which means you can do anything you want. Do this. Nicholas is pretty good on that kazoo. <laughs> Let's go.
go. Ba da 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 do. Ba da 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 do. Ba da 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 do. Da da da. Come on then, Paul. Let's get back. We've got a show to do. I'm right behind you. Mood of Endor, Radio 3 Endor, Star Wars Podcast, bringing you news and reviews from the galaxy far, far away. Welcome to episode 16 of Radio 3 Endor, and everyone is getting themselves ready for Star Wars Celebration Orlando by getting themselves flights, accommodation, spending money, backpacks, food and drink, Downloading all your YouTube survival tips and tricks, safe words, making sure your pre-orders are in place, and of course, tickets. As for me and Paul, it's a trip down to East Endor Market for all our nibbles, and catch the captain of the Lost Waves doing his street performance, which was great, and made some money on the old Ewok scrub. I am your host, Jamie, and with me is the man that collects spores, moulds and fungus, it's Paul. Oh, cheers, thanks for that, mate. How are you, buddy? You right? I'm not too bad, Paul. Are you all right? <laughs> yeah, not too bad. I've, um, <laughs> yeah, you just brought that up, didn't you? And lovely, yeah. thing, <laughs> um, I, um, We've had a... I've been spending a fortnight absolutely gutting the the uh, the attic. Um, I broadcast here from the attic, and um... no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, these and, uh, these yeah. uh, e- Endorian uh, e- uh, uh, fungus, <laughs> mate. It grows everywhere, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, you've had a bit of a problem, haven't you? Pro- uh, haven't yeah, you we've, had a, we've had a moisture problem, let's put it that way. So a moisture to, problem, um, yeah. So, yes, um, I have to basically gut the place, find out what, if there's any leaks coming in and dehumidify everything and clean everything up about nine times. Yes, yeah. to say that it's, Paul uh, has had his work cut out, cleaning all his equipment down. Yes. Yes, yes it's not been fun. It's not been fun. But I'm on top of it now and we're up and running again, but my head has not been in Star Wars whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I have. <laughs> <laughs> right. What we'll do then, Paul, is we have got some breakdown of all the... You could say it's the latest news um, that's been going around. But before we get into the news, Paul, I just wanted to um, say uh, thanks to DK Books, uh, the PR was her name is Haley Cox. She sent us some um, some books to review and also put us on the list for Star Wars reads, which would be yeah. on earlier uh, uh, later on in the year. So that's mm. going to be brilliant. But what she sent over to me and Paul was a copy of Star Wars year by year. Yeah, it's um, a massive, a massive book. It's absolutely massive. It's a, a visual history, and this one is updated as an expanded edition by Pablo Hidalgo. Pablo Hidalgo, yeah. That's yeah. correct. You, you, Paul, you are the linguistic <laughs> of names. I can never pronounce names. Now, I um, I actually own the, the one before this, mm. and so I had a, a good chance to... Um, to sort of like put them both together and uh, see what is updated. And, and, and I've had a bit of a read of this one. And yeah. um, my book goes up to 2010, where okay. this one goes up to 2016, if I remember rightly. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, 2016. And uh, onwards, you can probably hear the flicking pages. There we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, 2000... Uh... Yeah, 2016, and um, it's actually, uh, you know, to be fair, it's a fantastic, beautiful book. It's, it's really well illustrated. It's for all the people that love photography and uh, film illustration. Uh, it's there's a lot of history in there, obviously, and it also tells you that it's got some behind the scenes facts and as well as um, covers from different magazines, and it also got uh, references. Anything from um, the Lucasfilm archives, which is like Indiana Jones Labyrinth, the celebrations, is, of course. It's also got pictures of stamps in it that was given away, models, figures, mm. 
uh, helmets, uh, oh, every absolutely everything. And mm. it's such a beautiful book. It's the artwork and it's fantastic. Now, um, looking into this book, Paul, I did no. notice one thing. Now, um, it's uh, 2010, actually. That one is. Have I just picked up the wrong one? <laughs> I've just picked up my old one. Older. Yeah, I think I did. Sorry. <laughs> I just picked. They're very confusing, actually. I just uh, like to comment on these. Um... There's there's two prints that come on the inner sleeve. I yeah. believe I believe they they I'm not sure if these are the same ones that come with the previous edition. The wrist, um, the wrist. You've got like a, a picture of a falcon chase, uh, which looks actually quite good. This one's from the Force Awakens, yeah, um, 2016 Lucasfilm, and also uh, Snow Fight. Um, so it's like a, a piece of concept art by Eric Tiemans and Ian McCaig. Yeah. Depicts an intense moment as Ray and Carlo Ren duel in an otherwise silent forest. Hmm. This looks very emotive, yeah. Well, the it's ones that came well. with um, the the previous book was hmm. a um, a lighting uh, a lighting concept by Matt Gazer of Obi Wan Kenobi and the Duchess of Mandalore from season two of Star Wars Clone Wars. Now, this picture is actually in the new edition. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And the other picture, the, the other one, the other picture that comes with it is a fantastic um, her, a picture of Harrison Ford on the set for principal photography of The Empire Strikes Back. Basically, he's got his gas mask with him and he's underneath the, the Falcon as it's taken uh, inside the, the, the asteroid worm, you could mm. say. Taken inside that fantastic, like, behind-the-scenes photo that is. That came with the original edition. But... As I was saying just before, um, before mm. this trying to find out which edition I've got in my hands, is <laughs> in the book it's actually got a forward by George Lucas and Pablo in mine, yeah, yeah? and mm. it's got a, a forward in the next in the new edition, mm. but it's the same forward, yeah. If for word for word, it's the same forward from the old book to the new book. Um, yeah. That's my only criticism with, with this. Um, I would have thought um, that Pablo would have probably um, redone his introduction, considering it's a, it's a new ver- it's a new updated yeah. version. So yeah. you, you think he would have updated that bit, but unfortunately, mm. that's just been copy and pasted from the old yeah. to the new. Bit disappointing yeah. on that on that front. But if you miss, the, you know. Pretend you didn't. Yeah, it's, re- it's, it really is up. a small kind of yeah, yeah. Um, you know thing to pick up on. Yeah, the, it yeah. is. Uh, to be fair, that's the only thing I could pick up. The rest of it mm. is absolutely stunning. It's um, got a lot of information. It's got a lot of stuff about micro machines and things that were released from certain you know things and movies that were in between the trilogies, like um, say like Death Becomes Her and just yeah. It's just like a hot, you know, a hot pot of uh, 80s nostalgia, basically. Oh, man, there are some um, seriously uh, fantastic scene uh, pictures that I, you know, from back in the day that I, I can't remember seeing. But, um, you know, like uh, the R2-D2 and C-3PO at the 50th Academy Awards. Um, um, so that was in it. And it's also got a laser. It's got a laser player in it, Paul. Oh, <laughs> yeah, December the fifteenth, the first laser disc player manufactured by Philips is released in Atlanta, Georgia, where it sells for seven hundred and forty nine pounds. Wow! Wow! wow. <laughs> the first laser disc tile, <laughs> right, marketed in North America is Jaws. Oh, was it Jaws? That's what it says. Okay. Yeah, Jaws. Um, and this is from uh, November to December uh, seventy eight. And right at the bottom of the page is something that I remember big time. It's the Boba Fett um, offer. Kenneth's first mail-away offer for the Star Wars action figure for Boba Fett, which is initially promoting the rocket-firing backpack. Now, that yeah. they never released that figure in the end, and that figure is worth not. absolute mint. I mean, proper Okay, so did they do some it. prototypes of it, yes. Um, yeah, they did. Uh... Yeah, they they did. They didn't actually release that. They actual didn't release it, no, because public. they were they were afraid that the um, the the rocket will shoot little kids in the eyes. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I've, had, I've had that happen to me as yeah. a kid, so I know what that's like. Yeah. In fact, um, I've actually got... I was looking in my, my own Star Wars archives, you could say, of stuff, and um, I've actually got my original letter from Palatoy saying I can't have it. Um, and they were yeah, basically, yeah, and um, <laughs> saying, like, uh, we'll send you something else instead. But I've got two of the letters... So obviously I'd sent away from one and then sent away again. So in fact, I think I've got um, the uh, Chewbacca's uh, Brilliant Bolt. I think it's called a Brilliant Is is basically, you no, know, the chain mail he wears across yeah. himself. It's that. I got that. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> I was a bit gutted. But I'll mm. tell you what, if I had that action figure, man, that was worth a hell of a lot of money. Mm. I mean, hell of a lot of money. But yeah, this this uh, this year by year visual history book that that would, I didn't expect to get something as as substantial as that from uh, from Haley. Yeah. Um, so yes, Haley, thank you very much for that. Yeah. It's uh, and as soon as I've actually had time to have a real good dig through it, then we will do a, a proper review on it. Yeah. Uh, I think we should it, talk about. I tell you what more. would be uh, what we should do, Paul, as we go down. Uh, do you know uh, each month when we do a podcast, we'll pick yep. a particular page in that well, a month, particular year, a particular year or month, yeah. yeah? Yeah, and we'll uh, go over at that particular point. That'd be fantastic on that, and that'll mm. give us something to do. And also, we got um, something for the kids as well, didn't we? Yeah, the uh, she also sent us uh, a Rebel Heroes book, which is basically packed with all the facts on all the Rebel characters. Uh, it also covers the um, the um, the cartoon version. Um, so yeah, so. So that's yeah. quite informative if you, if you wanted to like catch up on all the characters, find out who, where they came from, what they did, and. Yeah, what their role is um, um, Mon, it's, Mon it's, Mothma and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's really good book, and it's it's um, for an age. Uh, what's the age on that on that book, Paul? Um, it's like an easy read, isn't it? It's a I read mean, yeah, this that, is like a level three, which is classed as a beginning to read alone. So yeah, I would kids. imagine like um, seven, eight year old. Yeah, um, I know my Nicholas has got it upstairs in his room, and. Um, um, I will be getting a proper read of him, but he's in bed. Mm. <laughs> At the moment, yeah, and um, DK books are av- uh, reachable at uh, www.dk.com, um, so you can have a look at these books online there. So, hmm. yes, it's uh, it's very kind of Haley to send them out to us. Like I say, as soon as we've like had a good look, chance yeah. to get through, especially yeah. myself because I've, I've been totally out of the loop. And um, I she do also apologise for not having time to <laughs> look through them properly. Yeah, and she yeah, also yes, sent me um, uh, an extra book, Paul, um, which was the Rogue One Visual Guide. Um, which I was talking to you about. It's got all the pictures and all the characters and all the the different world, you know, of the different worlds of um, the Rogue One. Um, yeah. That's an absolutely fantastic book. I've, I've quite enjoyed reading that as well. So yeah, mm. thank you, Haley. It's much appreciated, and um, yes. hopefully it'll be an ongoing thing with DK Books. I can't wait to see what else they've got. Yeah, on fingers, fingers crossed. Fingers yeah, crossed. Fingers crossed. Yes, thank you. Right, let's get on to with the news then, Paul. Okay, okay. One of the um, bits that I've seen. And it's about Star Wars. Will they or when will they ditch the nostalgia? Mm. This this particular um, article on Dark Horizons. So Gary Whitaker, the screenwriter who co-wrote Rogue One, uh, was out doing press for the film's home video release and was asked if one day we'll reach a time when the franchise will no longer mind nostalgia and skip out on legacy characters altogether. So like basically tackling new ca- completely new characters and events and not relying on familiar cameos. Mm. So, yeah, so basically his reply was, uh, I think you've already seen us get 90% of the way there with Rogue One. Yes, you see Leia, yes, you see the Death Star and Vader, because those are the elements of that story and they belong there. So you can't tell that mm. story without them characters. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, but for the most part, 90% of that story is completely new characters, completely new planets and places you've never seen before. Mm-hmm. It's a Star Wars movie with no Jedi. Yeah, true. You don't... You don't see a lightsaber once until Vader pops it out at the end. Spoilers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. So yeah. he says it, and it, and it, and he goes on and on basically. And I think that what they're aiming for now, probably their the premise, mm. eventually is to go is, on to brand new stories. Yeah, w- which we've seen with um, Rogue One. Yeah, and even with um, Episode Seven, really, it's got brand new characters, isn't yeah. it? But it's got a couple yeah. of the legacy, and eventually they will. I, I, got, they, they, they will have to go. Yeah, yeah they've got to to carry on the saga. They've got to. Yeah, they? the trilogy's yeah. been done, you know, and uh, 
and all the rest of it. So, and, do you know? And funny the, and these, said the that characters point. are really likable. You know, they're, they're not. Well, they're not. They're not forgettable. Yeah, that's true. You, you know, know. Um, I, you know. I, the thing is with Rogue One. Every time I, I keep thinking about it, is I actually, yeah, I actually preferred it more to mm. to Episode Seven. I don't know why. I think it just yeah. hit all the beats for nostalgia for me, and and it was just. It, it's the action sequence, the last third yeah. of the film. The action, it's just a massive battle. It's, you know, it's yeah. epic. It yeah, is epic. it is, it is, it is. Um, funny enough, talking about uh, Rogue One, Paul, um, yeah. <clears throat> apparently um, an alternative ending has been revealed, a life-saving escape. Now, Anthony hmm. Bresnik, uh, Bres- Anthony Bresnik, <laughs> uh, for ent- basically Entertainment Weekly, he's always good for uh, stories. Right, he is found. He's been doing um, some um, stories for EW, um, and has been finding out because the Blu-ray, the Blu-ray gets released on April the fourth, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so he says here, once there was a um, a different ending, how the rebels hero survived. Once there was a way to get back home, at least for Jin Erso and um, and Captain Andor. Uh, Rogue One Star Wars story filmmakers have said that they always intended to kill off the entire Rebel team during the heist uh, for the Death Star plans on the tropical world of Scarif. But in the very early scripts, before getting the go-ahead for the sacrificial landing, they came up with an escape plan. The original um, instincts were that they should all die. The screenwriter, the screenwriter Gary Ritika tells EW, it's worth it. If you're going to give your life for anything, give your life for this. To destroy a weapon that's going to kill you all anyway. Um, so basically, yeah. Um, uh, to what's been said really here is um, original drafts was they were going to get off. They were going to escape. You know what I mean? But uh, Disney went with, let's kill them all. And at the end of the day, it's the way it had mm. to go really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's quite a, a fantastic story. I'm going um, I'm going to put a link this news for this uh, story because it's 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 really quite intru- uh, interesting mm. about it but also about Rogue One Paul is Rogue One the Blu-ray has mm. hit the torrent sites torrent sites yeah. yes yeah. so um, if you was of certain nature you can download the Blu-ray rip a 720 and a 1080 now um, I was looking about on the internet to see how many downloads it had been got mm. on the very first day? This is the first day that it popped up on my feed. Yeah. One website had um, 17,250 downloads. Okay. Then that shot up to 256,912 downloads. And that was within that had changed within two hours. I can imagine it would do it. It's one of the films that people want to see and they didn't get a chance to go to the cinema. But yeah. No, I don't condone, you know, obviously the piracy side of it and watching films illegally. If you're going to download it, please go out and buy it, you know, and support yeah. and support yeah. it. Well, I'll agree with that, Paul. Um, you see, because yeah. I've pre-ordered it on my PlayStation and yeah. I've also pre-ordered the, the Blu-ray. Um, so, you know, if, to me, and I've seen the film, I've paid my money, I've seen the film. Uh, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I've not personally downloaded it, but I, you know it's tempting. I'd say it's tempting. <laughs> it's um, but especially I've do... if you like, you know, it's a ten eighty, like yeah, you, yeah, you could, you could be true, uh... true. And I've also started seeing some videos on YouTube of the ending, and you can tell they've ripped off. They've they've ripped, they've downloaded it and ripped it, ripped it off because there's. Um, in fact, I posted it on Facebook today, as we record yeah. this, uh, a mashup between the ending of Rogue One and the beginning of Star Wars A New Hope, so it mm. looks like one long film. Okay. And where else would they have got that DVD footage? You know what I mean? <laughs> from the, it, yeah. Basically from the Blu-ray rip. <laughs> uh, but, it's still, you know, at the end of the day, um, mm. the in my early days, there was uh, plenty of film that I, I downloaded, but I bought. Yeah, yeah. I bought them as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. It, it, it. I mean, people do complain about torrents an awful lot or, or copied films, but you know, there's probably fifty percent of the people that will download that will go and buy it because yeah. they because they want that physical copy. Yeah. But, you know. So, I mean, there's even music artists that have said, you know, yeah, we don't agree with it, but it does actually make sales for us. It does, doesn't know, it? Because so, it gets the word out. 
It does. It does. It's the the popularity grows, especially if you like, say, an independent, uh, like a producer or an independent mm. um, songwriter. Yeah. Then it's, it's the only way really that you can reach that audience. Yeah. Is by having that availability to so many millions of people. You know. That's very true. Plus, some studios deliberately put their stuff out onto torrent sites. To, I have heard that. Yeah. Yeah. To see that. how many downloads they can get and how mm. popular because. The first, if I remember a couple of years ago, the first three episodes of Game of Thrones was accidentally leaked onto the internet (laughs) and it was instantly downloaded. Mm. And, I mean, an awful lot of times, and everyone thought, oh, this is going to have a massive dent in the the actual series, but it didn't. It actually improved, yeah? It improved its character. So there is a bit of that, Paul. Sometimes you look at these and you think... How did they get that? That's straight off the studio. That's straight off the, from the studio. Yeah. Yeah. They, they like to say, oh, yeah, we didn't do it, but guaranteed. Yeah, they did. You <laughs> know what I mean? Because it's money. It is. At the end of the day, it's money. Money it is, is money, changing yeah. hands somewhere money. along the line with this kind of thing. Um, because who? How, how would you get a Blu-ray rip now? No. It's, yeah, that's it's it. Not out anywhere, is it? No, but it's out. No. But it's, uh, somebody's done it. <laughs> yeah, like I say, if you do, if if you do decide to do that, then then please do support it and and, and do buy either the DVD or the Blu-ray copy. Yes, yes. Um, you, Could, know, you you do know the right thing. <laughs> do the right thing. But um, I'm really open that it because um, I've also heard that there's no there's no uh, deleted scenes on this disc. No. Uh, perhaps for one reason, if there was deleted scenes, it'd be a brand new film. I mean, it'd be like the whole film, uh, but I want to see all the trailers. I think I'm really tra- looking forward to see it again because I, I think there may be parts that I've missed, mm. or you know, while I'm in the cinema, I either just didn't didn't quite catch it, or you know, because mm. it was a lot of action. Yeah. So I'm quite, I'm, I'm really quite looking forward to watching it again, and, and especially obviously my my two kids and my missus will experience it for the first time. So yeah, yeah, it'd be nice to see their reaction. As Plus, well. you know, Paul, if you um. If you've got it on the blue, if you've got Blu-ray 3D in the uh, PlayStation VR, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If mm. um, now, if any of the listeners have got a PlayStation VR system, now is the best time to get one. Uh, for the simple fact is, the latest update, Paul, wasn't it, was for yeah. 3D, 3D, 3D proper on, films. The VR, yeah, yeah. It's like as if you're looking at a, at a cinema screen in your VR headset. And it is three three. It is yeah. proper three D. It's it's yeah. like no ghosting, no double imaging. It's like you're sitting in the cinema, completely dark, watching it. I have already sat down and watched um Star Wars, <laughs> uh The Force Awakens. It was proper good. I enlarged the screen really big. Yes. So I was like, yes, wow. Yeah, I gotta look around. <laughs> yeah, so it was like a hundred foot screen in front of me and it was absolutely fantastic. Stuck my earphones in it was just unbelievable was and then as soon as I'd finished I was like right where's my Tron Legacy got to stick my Tron Legacy on and that was mint I don't yeah. care what people say about Tron Legacy Tron Legacy is a fantastic film for 3D mm. you know what I mean yeah it is Yeah, for, oh, it, for yeah. 3D it's uh, my eyeballs were just going this is great <laughs> so I can't wait for that I can't I'm wait so, for that I'm so glad that the 3D has gone past you know, you know, like the initial one, like um, you had Resident Evil, was it Extinction or whatever it was, one of the first ones that mm. came out, yeah. and it was all dead gimmicky, like shurikens being thrown towards the screen and <laughs> yeah, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It was so gimmicky, and I'm so glad that 3D has actually gone past that now, and it's and it's more au naturel, shall we say? Yes, yes. You know, it's, the, the filmography is a lot better. Well, and, uh, and the other thing as well, Paul, is um, that. The TV companies are no longer making... Well, the, t- the people who make the TVs, like Sony and um, LG, mm. are no longer making 3D TVs anymore. Yeah, it's, so, it's, di- it's dying to death some reason. Yeah, it? and I was thinking, oh, my God, you know, does this mean I can't buy a 3D-released Blu-ray? But I'm hoping with it, this will energise it again because mm. it'd be a shame to let this technology with the, with the people who've got... V- go with me you know i mean oh, i can't get any 3d films anymore because it's yeah. so good you listeners you've got to, to if you've got a, free, uh, a playstation vr have yeah. a look at uh, the playstation the software update 4.5 was it yeah, yeah i think on the playstation yeah it's absolutely amazing absolutely amazing and, it, and that update actually also if you if you use any kind of move controller um with the camera it actually 
makes things steadier as well. It mm. doesn't float as much now. Yeah, there was a there was a comparison video between the two firmware updates on yeah. on on YouTube yeah. and showing the difference between the if they held the, held the move controller rather than moving it mm. just to see what the drift was like yeah. and the drift was a lot better improved with the new yeah. firmware. So um, I was also looking on the on the internet about um, Star Wars Battlefront Two and they reckon they're going to incorporate more VR into Battlefront Two as well. I, I hear it's going to be more content as well than, than what they did with this first one. I, I, I believe the first one that they made um, was just to, uh, just to put the feelers out just to see what the market share was going to be. Yeah, the um, market share by putting the price skyrocketing oh, yeah. high. Yeah. yeah, That was the only thing about that and there was no single player but they, they are putting a single player in the yeah, next Star yeah, Wars yeah, Battlefront yeah, yeah. which is okay. good. <laughs> Because <laughs> we need that, and I think that's only because Paul, you've got other the other publishing companies like is it Visceral? They're bringing out a Star Wars game, which is going to be a first person story mode. And there's one thing that even though they're all under the same banner of Star Wars and Disney, they're all going to go. Well, if they can do it, we can do it. You know what I mean? In the end of the day, yeah. yeah. It, people will then go off Battlefront for a story mode. By going to Visual's game, so by Battlefront putting a story mode in, they're still going to get the people back, and they're going to get more people to get it. Well, if it's um, costing them X amount of money to to have the franchise, to have the license for yeah. it, then they've yeah. really got to start, you know, pushing it. True, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, now is a great time to pick up the original Star Wars Battlefront because you can buy it on the PlayStation Store with a three with a with a VR. Um, okay, yeah. bit in it um, I think for a, for a less than I think about $20 about 15 That's 16 cool. pa- yeah with um, I think I felt with Battlefront Paul I fell into the same trap as you fell into with um, uh, oh, what was that uh, game Destiny now you Destiny, paid all yeah. that money for all the downloads yes. well I yes. sunk in an absolute <laughs> bucket full of money into yeah. Battlefront and now you can buy everything now for like 20 yeah. quid Know what I mean? You always you always get hammered as an early adopter, as you know, as, as a dedicated yeah. fan. They're always gonna, you know, pull you through the ringer, shall we say? Yeah, um, it is. Yeah. For your money, <laughs> just like, just tip me upside down and shake me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Um, yeah. Right. So, um, other Star Wars news is that um, Mark Hamill actually tweeted out a, a photo, and he reckons it's the first ever photo of Luke Skywalker. On his Twitter account, which is, um, is it uh, the real Hamill? Is it? I actually saw it because Mark Hamill's on my Twitter feed. Um, oh, okay, yeah. But, um, Ham- sorry, Hamill himself. Um, and it's a fantastic way he's got his hands over his heart sort of thing. Um, but um, it just shows you, you know, all them years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a box yeah. nostalgia, that is. Early morning, Mark, day Mark one. started to... Release more tweets and more information regarding the early stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because um, so. he was, um, if I remember rightly, he was quite a keen photographer in in back uh, back in the day. If I can remember yeah. rightly, so that is a fantastic nostalgia picture. Which um, um, I did retweet on the Radio Free Endor website. So if you go onto the, onto the Twitter page, sorry, you'll be able to see that picture, or go yeah. to ha- Hamill him, at Hamill himself, and you'll be able to see. All his uh, doings and goings on, especially <laughs> with this photo. It's an absolute corker of a photo. Fantastic. Um, also, we've got um, uh, Bob Iger uh, went on in front of the uh, stockholders meeting, would you say, Paul, it was? I think it was, yeah. 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 And um, now, there is some audio out there. And, um, you know, to be fair, I could have ripped it, but Rebel Force Radio had it first. And... Uh, uh, Jimmy Mack and Jason, they go actually to have a bit more of an in-depth uh, talk about Bob Iger. Mm. This meeting, and he talks about the future of Star Wars, um, and he also talks about um, that he's actually seen the new Star Wars film. Mm. Um, it's really interesting. Um, and yeah, so I was going to put it here, but I won't. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> be, it would be unfair for me to put it in. Um, but, but you know you could get straight over there um, yeah. if, if push comes to shove I might stick it at the end of the show you never know if you just if you really <laughs> stick it in the end yeah but it's all all uh, shouts to uh, to Rebel Force Radio for that bit of audio it's fantastic yeah yeah 
Yeah, so another piece of news as well is that um, Frank Oz apparently may reprise the Yoda role. Um, so, yeah, filmmaker and voice actor Frank Oz has gotten people talking again about arguably his most famous big screen role, Yoda. In a piece for Variety about the legacy of the late Muppet genius Jim Henson, Oz was asked if he would reprise Yoda in the new Star Wars. So he replied, I feel like I'm a prisoner at war here and I can only give you my name, rank and serial number. To be true to the people who asked me, and they are kind of my family, I have to say I've been asked not to talk about it. I love Yoda. I would be happy to talk to you about it at the time they let me. Mm. So, yeah, so that's Disney saying, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Don't yeah. say what. Mm, it's so, not say anything. So, so it would imply that he's involved in some kind of way. Yeah. So. Well, he's been yeah. doing the voice, isn't he, in Rebels. He's been doing he's been doing Yoda in Rebels, so it would not surprise me if they will try and um, rehash. Well, they could bring Yoda back as a hologram message or something like that, or through the Force again, speaking mm. to uh, to Luke in the old Jedi Temple. We never know. We don't know until it until it comes out. How it's old it. is Yoda? Uh, when nine hundred years old, you'll be. <laughs> he's still old. He's right. He's still. He, he, put it this way, he, he died at 900 years old, and he, but he was still uh, springy enough to stop those seagulls po- poking on his head. Stop it now. Stop it now. <laughs> <laughs> right, I tell you, I love that. I yeah. absolutely love that. Um, I was sitting in, a, in, a, uh, in a, a cafeteria the other day with Nicholas and uh, Nicka, and, uh, and Nicholas says to me, Dad, can you tell me something about Star Wars? I says, funny enough, Yoda. He goes, did you know that Yoda used to rock and roll <laughs> down to the beach? He was strolling. And then <laughs> Seagulls pecked him on his head. Not right. He said, stop it. <laughs> Seagulls, stop it now. <laughs> and it was just then that Nicky booted me in the leg with her clog. Yeah, just, yeah. just winding him up. Um, talking about Rebels... Um, something else came up. Now, I've not seen this episode. It's the very late... It's the episode before the season final. So we're going to go into spoilers territory here. Okay. Spoilers. So if you don't want to know what happened in this latest episode of Rebels, um, then skip about, what, five, six minutes. Two, two or three years. Well. Yeah. <laughs> right, so it says here, Star Wars... Uh, right, Star Wars news. Right, Luke is the chosen one, not... Anakin, and this is not a rumour, right? It says here, Star Wars Breaking News reveals that Star Wars, that uh, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, (laughs) Star Wars Breaking News revealed that Luke Skywalker is the chosen one and not his father in the shocking new episode of Star Wars Rebels. What? What? (laughs) It says here, what the force is going on? Right? (laughs) The latest episodes of the official Star Wars Rebels animated series sent Star Wars fans into hyperdrive. The long-awaited duel between Obi-Wan and Darth Maul takes place on Tatooine when Maul figures out that the Jedi is protecting someone important, who we now know to be Luke. It ends with with the dying Sith asking, Tell me, is he the chosen one? We are not expected, uh, sorry, we didn't expect what was to come next, but the Jedi replies simply, he is. He Mm. is the chosen one. Uh, Mm. That is correct. An official Star Wars story has just stated that Luke, not Anakin, is the chosen one, as we've always been led to believe. So what does this mean for the original films, let alone the upcoming Star Wars episodes uh, 8, The Last Jedi, Because this is coming hard on the heels of the latest reports that Darth Vader did not kill Obi-Wan. The entire galaxy is spinning around us right now. I've never actually heard about that Darth Vader did not kill Obi-Wan. Right, Mm. but uh, that must be some other news somewhere else, uh, listeners. This Mm. new revelation about Luke actually links back to the evolving position of Obi-Wan and Yoda in the original trilogy. He starts to suspect that they had made a mistake believing that Anakin was the chosen one. Obi-Wan has always been very clear that he viewed Darth Vader and Anakin as two separate entities. On the very first meeting with Luke on Tatooine, he spoke fondly of the former apprentice. Obi-Wan said, He was the best star pilot in the galaxy and a very cunning warrior. And he used to take (laughs) all my change when it came to the cafeteria. He was a good friend, but never paid. 
his bills. He also told Luke that Vader had killed his father over the years. Many have seen this as a manipulative, misleading the young hero. However, it is very clear that it's, it's the audience that's being misled for the purpose of the big reveal. Obi-Wan is simply speaking his truth. The Vader indeed kill Anakin. Previously, though, it seemed that Yoda and Obi-Wan accepted that Anakin's fall to the dark side permanently ended his chance to restore balance to the Force. However, he did not neglect his position as the Chosen One. It simply meant that this particular destiny was not his to be made. So basically, um, the last this episode of Rebels is... The, so the balance of the force is when is when I don't know because that really just turned the, the films upside down to tell the truth Paul mm. here it is hmm. I'll have is to watch canon? <laughs> yeah well apparently it is this, yeah. do you know this is the only thing that's kind of weird when when the, the new story writers the new story the new Star Wars story group get together and they've got to they write all these fantastic stories yeah to be fair mm. but then they've got to sort of make it work between the mythology of what's already happened. And yeah. that's the problem of doing a prequel series. You will carry on running into, oh, Brick we can't, wall. yeah, we yeah. can't do that because somebody's already said that, you know, mm. in a, we, you know, it's like the, the um, Star Wars, the Clone Wars animated series. They kept running into the problem that um, General Grievous had never met Anakin Skywalker until episode three, the film. So everybody was waiting for that meet up in the series, yeah. but it could never happen because it never happened until the film. And they're doing the same thing here. I think that. Uh, it it, it must be so hard for all the thread. You've got to follow every God single my thread. God, yeah. it, must be a, it must be a massive flow chart of, of all the characters' oh. deviations and. In time and and uh, time and space, really. Oh, yeah. it is, Paul. Isn't so, it? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it would blow my mind, especially it if you is. if you've came into the franchise kind of as a, as an as say as a young person and you and you've not really got all that information mm. about the previous ones. Yeah, yeah, it must be crazy. Oh, it must be crazy. I'll, yeah, I want to do that job. <laughs> oh, I'd like to be sitting there and listen to it, but no, you're yeah. right. You're right. Plus, to tell the truth, though, if I was there, I'd probably go, no, you can't do that, mate. <laughs> no, you can't do that, mate. Can somebody please get this guy out of here? No, you can't do that, mate, either. <laughs> you yeah. not get anything filmed. Well, there's absolutely tons of Star Wars news out there. It's, it's coming in thick and fast. And mm. um, we'll be here all day covering it, Paul. <laughs> it will do, yeah, if, if you really, really yeah. went for it, yeah. And we've really got to move on because we have got, coming up, a fantastic interview with Jason W. Chrisman, the old favourite returns. <clears throat> now, um, Jason came back, he reached out to us here at uh, Radio Free Endor, and he wanted us to showcase his brand new print for Star Wars Celebrations. So basically, he sent it to me and sent a copy to Paul, um, and it's... Um, a bit of a high res image. He sent us over yeah. over Facebook Messenger, so we could have a look at it. And um, basically, I've looked at it first, and yep. then I got quickly onto um, Jason, and I did uh, an interview with him. So what you're about to hear is the interview that I conducted a couple of days ago uh, with Jason, and where we will talk about what he did at the Emerald City Comic Con and his work for the forthcoming Star Wars Celebrations Orlando. So with me again is Jason W. Chrisman, the talented artist that was around for Celebration London, and yet again, he's doing some awesome artwork for Celebration in Orlando. Hi, Jason. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, we're uh, we're okay here. We're uh, ticking along as we do. Now, Jason... I want to get straight into it because uh, knowing you and me, we've got a lot to talk about. First of all, how was your trip to the Emerald City? Oh, Emerald City Comic Con. It was great. Mm -hmm. That is one of the best Comic Cons to go to. Yeah. It's 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 growing every year. It was the 15th year. Uh, put on by Reed Expo, the same company that does uh, Chicago and New York and Celebration. This year, the artists were upstairs in its own level away from the exhibitor floor so i thought i might expect to do about a third less 
uh, considering that, but I ended up doing better than last year. So, <laughs> really, really, was there yeah. was there more um, people coming through the doors this time? Uh, th- that must have been the case. It, it is growing. So, and I had a really great space too. I, my table number was BB8, ironically. Awesome! How how good is that? I know. And when I got the table number uh, through email weeks before the show, I emailed them back saying, you know, hey, thanks for you know hooking me up with a great table number you know and they're like okay we don't know really what you mean by that but i was like well <laughs> you know i do star wars stuff right yeah. i mean and they're like oh yeah that was just a coincidence and i'm like wow well the force was with me it so. is it is now did you manage to get away from your table because i know sometimes you don't often you you go to these great comic cons but you don't usually get away from your table but did you did you manage to get away this time i you know, once each day I did get away for anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So really it's just, you know, to the bathroom or to go to say hi to someone who I hadn't had a chance to. The only time I was able to go through the main exhibitor stuff was before the event, which is also great because no one's there, you know, besides, besides everyone working and preparing. So, you know, I got a couple good deals before the show on some stuff. I went by the Funko booth before it opened one day and uh, my cousin was with me on the last day and I was telling him how much the Funko stuff doesn't really do it for me with the big heads and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, and then as we were standing there talking about that and I was looking at what they had on the shelf, all of a sudden, I swear to God, it was like 30 seconds later, I was all, oh, but I want that. Yeah. <laughs> and they, were, and they <laughs> They had a uh, a Fred Flintstone, the Great Kazoo Funko guy, yeah. with the uh, with his little spaceship and stuff. And uh, oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, I've, I've I've seen a picture of it, and I was thinking, oh, that's so cool because it's not one that a lot of people would remember. Yeah, so it's a kind of an obscure one, and they were very limited edition. I was like, oh, I got to have that. I just went from, I don't ever want these things to, oh, I got to have that, like mm. just seconds later. And it, we laughed and laughed about that all day. I know what you mean, but these Funkos, when, when they first introduced them, I was like, nah, I'm not getting any of them. Now, if I look on my shelf, I think I've got about 16 of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. know what happened. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, my range from um, the uh, Ghostbusters to Back to the Future to the Rocketeer I had to get when they released the Rocketeer one. I was like, oh, gotta have the Rocketeer one, and then I've got a couple of the um, Harry Potter ones, and, uh-huh. um, and my one of my pride and joy ones, which is the Bioshock Big Daddy, because uh, I'm a big fan of that particular video game. And he's quite a heavy piece as well for a Funko. But but I do see a lot of these uh, collector's editions ones that are only at these certain comic cons. And for us in the UK, it's quite hard to, uh, to pick them up because they're not here. They're over there. Right. Yeah, I think this one was limited edition for Emerald City. And it's all green, mm. you know, so Emerald City, you know, it made sense. I got number 28. I don't know what they go up to. But I, you know, I when I buy stuff, I don't do it for collector's sake. I mean, I, I rip it right out of that box and put it on my shelf for me to pick it up and touch Oh, my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> I kept the box. It's in the garage. But it's uh, it's sitting on my shelf right now, right next to yeah. my desk. So That's pretty cool. Now, um, did you do um, some exclusive artwork for Emerald City or... Or did you take some pieces that you already done? Yeah, nothing. I didn't do anything exclusive. I mean, I, I saved some prints uh, from Celebration London. I did have, you know, some prints uh, of my latest character series that also debuted in London. Uh, so, I, I, you know, I just brought everything that I had. Uh, but I didn't do anything new. But a lot of the stuff was new to that show. So to a lot of people, it was a lot of new stuff. And I was busy the whole time. And uh, I even had uh, a stormtrooper come hang out with me for really? an hour. Was it a classic or first order? Uh, classic. Always, I always go classic. Always go classic. Uh, yeah, always go classic. And uh, I also had one of the um, R2 
Builders Club member is bringing our two unit over and hang out there for a while as well. And that kind of draws people in. It's a lot of fun. The R2 unit was a bit loud. My neighbors didn't care for that too much. <laughs> I'm surprised you actually didn't take a photo of the classic Stormtrooper with your little Lego Stormtrooper on his so- shoulder. Oh, well, I, I figured I had that. I had that too many shots of that, so I didn't do All it right. this time. But I did take a picture of him and me. I did take a picture of him arresting me, but... It was kind of a dumb picture, so I didn't post it. <laughs> so. you know, uh, now you've just said it, Jason, right? I feel like I've seen that photo. I don't know why, because because every time I see some stormtroopers, I take that same dumb photo. I've got one with my kids when they were small with me. I've got, I think, I've got, I must have about 20 photos of me being uh, arrested by stormtroopers. Right. You know what I mean? They just they keep going from my papers. I've, I've never got the right papers from. <laughs> it just seems like the fun thing to do. I don't it know is. why. But, it is. Uh... It's, it's great. I'll say. And one of these days, when I slim down enough, I'm going to get myself one of those classic stormtrooper suits. I really want one. Yeah. I, I've always wanted one too, but the more I got to know people from the 501, the more I don't want it. Only because how much time it takes to get into those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, forget yeah, it. When we, when we was in London for uh, celebrations, there was this guy dressed in a pink one, in a pink classic, and it, I was in the lift, and he took his helmet off, and it was like just dropping a lake on the floor. There was all this water just went, shh, and I was like, are you hot, mate? And he went, I'm baking. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah. Now um, at yeah. Emerald City Con, did you uh, see any any film stars or anybody famous? Did anyone stop by your table? You know, I, the only near famous person that came by my table this year was Peter Mayhew's publicist. <laughs> That's as close as I got to. <laughs> as close as I got to a, a celebrity, but I did meet uh, a lot of comic book artists. Mm-hmm who I consider celebrities yeah, as yeah. well. And uh, I got, I bought some of their graphic novels and had them signed. And um, I even found something for my dad. I never thought I could find something for my dad at a Comic-Con. But I did find a Rocky and Bullwinkle graphic novel uh, with uh, the illustrator there. And so he signed that for me for my dad. So I'm saving that for my dad's oh, wow. birthday. Sorry, Dad, if you're listening, you know what your birthday gift Oops. is. <laughs> <laughs> now, um I, I did notice that um, that uh, the kids from Stranger Things they were at uh, Emerald City as well, and uh, that uh, Millie Bobby Brown was asked um, which um, iconic character would she ever consider playing in. Hi, I'm Deborah from Tacoma, and I was wondering if you could play any role in like any other movie or TV show. What would it be? If you could play any role, I think I know the answer to this. A young Princess Leia. I think you're correct. (laughs) And I think you'd be perfect. Me, I I just, I I love Carrie Fisher. I think she's incredible. And um, and it would have been amazing meeting her here. And I know she was supposed to come here. And um, and if I ever got a chance to tell her how much I would love to carry on the legacy. Oh, cool. Mm. Yeah, I could, yeah. I can see yeah, that. Yeah, I can as well, you know what I mean? And plus, she is British, you know what I mean? But yeah, mm-hmm. it seems that all our British people are all replacing all these American um, uh, uh, classic characters. Yeah, yeah, the British and the Australians, you know. <laughs> uh, so um, so straight off from that, you was you were quickly at home and you was back on it doing some exclusive work for this year's Star Wars celebration as well, isn't it? Uh, Yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's been done. I mean, I keep making little tweaks to it, which I should stop doing. And the last time we spoke, I I couldn't say one way or the other if I was going to be at Celebration, even though I knew I was going to be there. Uh, So now we can definitively say, yes, I'm in the show, and I will be there. And the print was released online yesterday, so everyone, you know, nothing being hidden now. Which is this great. is great. I've actually, uh, you know, I it's, you sent me a, a pic of it just before it uh, went online, and I have to say it's actually a stunning piece, uh, Jason. You've you've really outdone yourself on this. 
straight away. Um, and if uh, listeners would go on to, uh, I, I think I've posted it actually on our website, uh, uh, sorry, on our Facebook page, as well as our Twitter. And I'll also put a link into it on the show notes for you, Jason, as well. But um, this piece has the bounty hunters from the scene from Empire Strikes Back. And they're sort of standing there facing you. And you've got this blue. It's all like a blue with them in silhouette, isn't it, Jason? Yep. Uh, you know my usual minimalist uh, route on this kind of stuff. Um, you know, I wanted to do character. I'm sticking with some character stuff right now. You know, I've kind of been through the whole ship series, uh, and I started doing some character stuff with my release last celebration that debuted with the uh, Han, Luke, and Leia, Boba Fett, and frozen Han Solo and then Vader and the Emperor um, so this time I decided to do all bounty hunters uh, everyone loves the bounty hunters I love the bounty hunters I just wanted to give something to the fans that they were asking for because after the past two celebrations I hear you know a lot about Boba Fett and Bounty Hunters. Uh, everyone asking me, when am I going to do that? And then when I did those uh, Be- uh, Boba Fett print last year, it sold so quickly. You know, uh, people just love Boba Fett. So I did one with Boba Fett again, but I went with this whole entourage, you know, from Empire Strikes Back. It's um, it's it's very similar to the Usual Suspects. Uh, picture, you know that famous one with the characters on it. First of all, that's what struck me. Uh, but then, uh, but as you as you look at it, and straight across the uh, across the top, you've got their names in Arabish all across the top. Is it Arabish or Arabic? You know, I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> it, but I've heard it many yeah. different ways. But yes, you're yeah. correct. Uh, that actually originally, I was debating should I put their names up there or not. And I kind of talked it over with some of the other fellow celebration artists because we all kind of share notes and, and help each other out. And uh, I, I I shared it with them and said, what do you guys think, names or no names? And um, I think it was Russell Walks who mentioned he liked the names but do it in the Arabish font. And so I tried it out and, and I loved it. I was sold on it. So – And you probably can't see it in the details online because they're not very high resolution, but they do have a somewhat of engraved, embossed feel to them. So it's very subtle. Uh, In the print, it's it's much more noticeable. And um, so, uh, and they're all in the same order as you saw them in the film, all with their you know typical poses and uh, that you would recognize the most in. It was really hard to figure out what I should accentuate on each one. Um, uh, Boba Fett's obvious, you know, his his helmet uh, visor is the most iconic. Bosk, I mean, I played around with so many things, but I ended up just uh, highlighting his eyes and his yeah. teeth. Uh, Zookus on the far right was, uh, what did it do it's for just that? His, uh, it. his um, mouth... Uh, piece, yeah, that, his, yeah, uh, his mask, right. The yeah. front mouth piece, mm-hmm. and I did the same thing uh, for uh, for yeah. Long next yeah. to him. Even though they had bigger eyes, it kind of made sense to do with the big eyes. But the angles that I had their heads, the eyes weren't working very well. Um, so I went with their mouthpieces. Uh, IG eighty eight, you know, with the red mm-hmm. light. Uh, but Dengar, that was the toughest one, and I tried so many things. Maybe, maybe his scar, maybe the hole in his whole headpiece where his face comes yeah. through, and I didn't like any of them. Uh, so I just stuck with a pure silhouette of him, and I think his, you know, his headpiece and his big long rifle and his kind of stocky stout kind of, you know, did it for him, you know, on its own. So yeah, the role you know when you look at them, you you, you, you know they're all iconic poses. That's for sure. Um, I was just looking at the Bosque one, and um, um, I think it's on this this uh, digital one that I've got. But it looks like you uh, highlighted his uh, his toes as well. Uh, yeah, you could you could see his toes. I mean, if if the floor wasn't a silhouette, yeah. you would actually see his toes kind of curled over the edge like they were on yeah. the ship. 
So I quite like that. You've got his uh, toenails, uh, sort of uh, like a slight little glint off his toenails. Yep, and, and a little bit of, of Boba Fett's, uh, you know, shoe knife yep. that kind of sticks out a yep. little bit, is yep. in there. I did notice that. Um, I, was, uh, I was thinking, now that's detail. That is detail. But the other bit of detail that I absolutely love is you've got the you've got Vader in the background as he's like walking up towards them or something. It, it, well, it looks like he's looking out the window just to turn around and then walk up towards them. Yeah, uh, you know he was one of the last additions I made to the print. Um, I didn't have any background other than just you know a solid background originally when my when I submitted my concept art. Uh, but I really wanted to add more to this, but still keep it minimalist as possible. Uh, so I went with a very faint bridge of the Star Destroyer uh, with the bay windows, and then added uh, a silhouette of Vader in the background. And you know, it could be him before he, you know, comes up to them and gives them their instructions. Uh, it could be after. You know, we don't. You know, uh, wh whatever you feel. <laughs> like it may it might be from before or after but uh and then there's a little bit of detail of the of the bridge area as well in there that you can see it's 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 a really nice piece uh, i i absolutely i totally love the color the blue that you've picked on it i think it's so uh, it's just nice you know i mean it's really nice and and of course i like how you've put the the lens flares in as well really make it pop out Fantastic yeah thanks piece. i'm i'm doing lens flares now obviously my last few prints of Adam it's 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 my natural evolution of my of my uh, stuff that's been coming out and uh, so yeah my my favorite part of the print is actually the imperial lights on the sides uh, you know it's yeah <laughs> I do you know that's a bit stuck out to me I like if I could have them in my house I would <laughs> I'd have <laughs> down the wall or just I yeah I, I do That's have them cool. in my house actually and they they're not lit up they're just white decals life-size decals that I put in my office on the walls oh, uh, cool. so they've been kind of I, I did it on the walls the same time I started the concept of this print way back in September or October when I started working on this and uh, I must have played with the lens flares hundreds and hundreds of times I can't count how many times you know, mm -hmm. before I ended up doing what I did now and then of course adding a lens flare to IG-88's eye and Boba Fett's chest plate yeah. uh, just to add a, a touch of more other color in there and plus they accentuate the celebration logo this year too with being red yes well uh, congratulations for being picked to, to be in this celebration because I remember the last time I spoke to you Jason that you said that there's a massive list of artists that submit work to celebrations and get turned down and it must be heartbreaking for them that they've put their heart and soul into some fantastic pieces of artwork just to say yeah sorry you know what i mean you know you're not that good enough for the for this show but you was so congratulations for, to be picked again on that one jason yeah i think i mean it's a you know it really is an honor to be picked three years in a row it's unbelievable to me uh, there's one or two artists that have been to every single one so far. Uh, Matt Bush, I think, is one of them. And uh, those guys just, they blow my mind every year with what they do. Uh, and I did see a lot of the concept arts, the ones that didn't get in as well, because we all kind of shared them together. And I couldn't believe some of the ones that didn't make it. I couldn't believe I made it compared to some of the ones that didn't. And so, you know, I get, uh, luckily, you know, there's not too many other licensed minimalist people doing stuff for Star Wars so there's not a lot of competition in my general artistic design area but um, once again minimalist got the votes <laughs> so yeah, it is yeah because I've had a look around at certain uh, pieces of uh, submitted artwork and um, I hope they forgive me for saying it but a lot of it looks like comic book front cover work if you know what I mean, yeah. you know what you would see on a on a, a latest Marvel comic. There's a lot of mm -hmm. that, and I think you you doing this kind of style, I think will always get in unless somebody else like decides to have a go at it, because it is it's 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 new, it's fresh, it's different. And out of all the artwork that I've got on my walls, it's minimalist, 
that I've always gone mm-hmm. for, like your uh, your mm-hmm. Death Star one. Um, I've got that on my wall, and if I get this one, I'll be sticking this one on my wall. I just need a bigger wall now. <laughs> it's well, all getting, so getting well that's the other thing about my print this year is I went smaller this year. One of the bigger complaints that I've gotten over the years was – uh, and not making a sale on it was uh, people complaining about how much wall space they have. They always say, ah, you know, I don't have wall space for something like this. And and I get it, you know, I, I'm i the same way. My walls are filled and I'm constantly trying to rotate art just to change things up. Uh, so this year I went 13 by 19. And it's funny because all the all the prints I have on my walls in my office right now, with the exception of maybe two, are around that size. And so it wasn't purposefully like me picking out all those sizes. It just ended up being that it just seemed to fill the holes better and easier. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that that will uh, induce you know more people to buy it, since hopefully they could they could find room for something this big. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, the other thing about this print, Jason, is this particular print is ideal if you was going around a convention, you could probably get the autographs from the people that played these characters, apart from uh, IG-88, uh, of course, unless you just get your coffee maker just to spill a bit of coffee on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but the rest of them, you could get the actors to sign these particular bits. You totally could, yeah. Yeah, and it'll look really good if they side in the black do you know what I mean or even where their names are at the top you know what I mean so, you, so this piece to me it's like ideal for uh, for those autograph hunters to have yeah I totally agree uh, and actually a lot of my prints in the past uh, people have bought at the shows and later have come back after they've had done some autograph sessions and they've shown me uh, Carrie Fisher signing you know, one of my prints last year and um, Peter Mayhew signing a print and things like that of, of stuff I've done. And it's it's an honor to see people buy something of mine and then take it to them and pay them to sign them. It's amazing. It is, it is, it is. Now, do you know, because I remember when I spoke to you a couple of months ago, Jason, you was, you was thinking, what should I do for celebrations and you were toying about certain different ideas did you ever think about uh, possibly something from Rogue One or from The Force Awakens I think about it all the time I do like those two films and I just wanted to I'm not there yet (laughs) yeah 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 I'm thinking the close the closest I'm gonna get maybe in my next print that I'm gonna try and get submitted and licensed is going to be directed at the droids. And that will encompass all the films instead of just the original trilogy. So that's going to be my first step into outside the original trilogy. And we're going to see how that goes. So, Jason, even though you can buy this uh, from yourself, Jason, last year, if I remember rightly, you had people could buy it online or order it online. Have, have you got the same sort of process in place for this one? We, it's, it'll be an identical process this time. So March 31st, the pre-sale will be online with darkinkart.com. And there'll be a link on my website and Facebook and Twitter and everything and Instagram as well. Dark Ink Art is uh, basically Acme Archives who runs the show every year at Celebration. Because uh, my table will be in the show versus my own booth. Uh, everything is going to be run through them. Uh, so they are doing the pre-sale and I believe it's March 31st to April 7th or 10th. I can't remember. They don't have all their ducks in line yet. But that is for pre-sale for in-show pickup only. So, because these prints are exclusive for the show. However, just like previous years, should I have prints uh, left over after the show, which I always do. I I never really sell out. uh, Those prints will be available starting the day after the show on my website to order and they ship within a week after that. Even if I do sell out the show, which I doubt, but you know, fingers crossed that I do really good. I do hold back 10 or 20 prints specifically for post celebration purposes. And that whether that be for online sales or an upcoming comic con where I want people to get a chance to have one. Yeah. That's the best thing. It's great that some people who can't 
make it to celebration can still pick up your prints at another uh, convention locally to them um right. so they all get to to see get one of your fantastic artwork on their wall so jason does that mean that this picture is gold is or are you still going to tinker with it <laughs> well uh, i'm literally a day away from releasing it to the printer uh i've already done some test prints with an amazing laser machine that they have there testing the cmyk values because blue let me tell you is the hardest color to get correct uh, when it comes to four color process uh, you can never get the blues that you're the brilliant blues that you see in rgb jpeg type files so i i've done quite a few test prints already and a lot of them have gone way to magenta and i keep pulling out the magenta i keep pulling out the magenta and uh you know, increasing the cyan and I'm pulling out the yellow, but I have to make sure the yellow is only pulled out of the blue section, not the black areas, because I want the blacks to be rich. But I also have to keep in mind that the white uh, copyright information that's on there will turn a slight hue if I don't have a good equal value black color in it. So, uh, and I'm finding, you know, little things like that out the hard way. Even though I should know these things, I've been doing printing for 25 years, I just always think I could get away with one and, you know, the laws of color physics, you know, remind me that I can't do that. Um, that it sounds so complicated it is complicated <laughs> when, I, when i printed stuff out i've gone well that's not how i look at it on my screen why is that but then i'll just go ah, oh, well it's only for my use right <laughs> but getting these colors trying to you know get these colors right it, it is important you know what i mean and it must take you all day i i've played around with it way too much uh my actual folder is housing all the files and versions and uh, everything I have just for this print alone is well over 20 gigs, and that's for a single print. That I'm, uh, I just, I got to make sure it's right, and I got to be able to go back and make sure that you know what I'm doing now I haven't tried before. And blue, very difficult color to get the way you really want it. Uh, you know, I also considered maybe just doing a three color process with Pantones, you know, with a with a nice Pantone blue and then going to black and a red. But I, I wasn't sold on doing that. And uh, the process, even though it sounds like it would be less expensive, was actually a little more expensive. And I'm trying to keep the price point down for everyone this year, too. I've always been over $50. Well, London, it was 40 pounds, but literally that translates into more like 54 US dollars. Uh, so I'm trying to keep this below a 50 US dollar mark. And uh, right now we're shooting for $45 a print. So I think it's a good price point for everyone. I think it's a good size for everyone. And uh, I hope it's a su successful uh, show. I do too. I think, Jason, that you'll be... Yeah, you're right, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm hoping it'll go uh, absolutely swimmingly for you. And um, like, well, you've been to more um, celebrations than I have. But uh, when I went down there, there was uh, in the one in London, it was pretty packed. I must admit, there was an awful lot of people around the artist's alley. So, uh, and um, I've also heard that um, that this celebration is going to be the last one for uh, a couple of years. I heard that too. That makes me sad. Um, yeah, but I think. If I'm not mistaken, between the years 2013 and 2015, there was a two-year gap as well. I don't think there was one in between, unless the one in between was in Germany. But I don't remember quite. I don't think it was. I think I think it was in Orlando in 13, and then it was two years later before it was back in Anaheim. So, and I get it. You know, they don't want to make it the same all the time every year. It's the same, and that just means you know, two years from now, uh, it, you know, it's going to have a lot of hype. Yeah, it will. You've got to think, though, in two years' time, you would have had the the Han Solo film. You would have had episode nine be coming into the cinemas. Uh, well, I mean, in two years' time, I think there'll be – I think Han Solo – Han Solo would probably be out by the time it is out. They'll probably be filming nine. Yeah. Or it'll be you know in post-production maybe by the time that comes around. But it'll yeah. it'll also be the year that uh, Star Wars Land opens at Disneyland and Disney World. So now, 
yeah, it would not surprise me if they decide to do the actual convention in Star Wars land. It would not surprise well, me. Well, that would be awesome, that. but I don't think there's room for it. <laughs> it, yeah. it barely fit in the Anaheim Convention Center. So, and that's big. I know when um, in the London one, they had to put it in, in no end of different rooms. Because I remember I, I was constantly walking from one corridor to an next, you know what I mean, just to get to everything. Uh, for the way it mm-hmm. was set out at the Excel Center in London. These things, especially every year, they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I think it, stuff does need to have time to breathe and have a break. And I, I do believe that, that when stuff has a break and comes back, it's better. You know what I mean? It's it's a, a better experience. I think so too. And by then, yeah. and by then, I'd be able to afford to go. That's for sure. Right. And even on the administrative side of things too, I've noticed the past three years. Uh, that things have been getting more and more difficult to get things done in time. Not just from the artist's end, but I mean, I see it on the administrative side of Lucasfilms and Acme, where they, you know, the, getting the names out and getting the concept art in and getting uh, the pre sale dates and all that kind of stuff ahead of time. It gets later and later every year that they're putting out the information because people are just running out of time. And um, I think, yeah, this two year gap should really allow people to be a lot more prepared than they have been in the past few years. So, because given a year from one to another, it shoots past really, really fast. It does, yeah. I mean, and before you know it, it's on you. So I can understand when, you know, trying to put on something, it's bigger celebrations. Man, everything's got to be as fast-paced. You know what I mean? People calling people day to day to day, you know what I mean? Right. And, and it only takes one mess up, and it could all go, you know, fall to the floor sort of thing. Yeah, it's a, dom- it's a dominant yeah, effect for sure. Yeah. And you got to give them credit this time around too because despite the issues – that we've been having with getting stuff out and released and and submitted and all that stuff, uh, really they had less than a year to do this. I mean, the last celebration was in July and the new, the next one's in April. So that's barely nine months right there. Uh, so, I mean, basically, you know, after Celebration London, they just turned around and went home and started working on Celebration Orlando right away because it, it does, time flies. So Well, in the UK, we've got some great Star Wars conventions that have been coming up through the year. For all the, for all the listeners that can't get over to uh, Orlando, you've got uh, the uh, you've got UltraCon that's happening later on in the year. Now, last year, uh, Jason, they actually built the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon at full scale and uh, the boarding ramp, and it was absolutely amazing. If I could have took it home, I would have done. Yeah, you know, what I mean, it was absolutely, it was, it was unbelievable. Even though it was just the cockpit, and do you know, if you look at the Falcon itself. You've got the cockpit, and it goes off to the to the right. You know, sort of skewed. Yeah, off. awesome. Um, so they sort of built that, and at the end of that, had the boarding ramp, so you could walk up and walk it sort of slightly down oh, the corridor great. and into the cockpit. And when you sat in it, it vibrated because the engines oh, were going. You didn't hear it from outside, but you heard it from great. inside. And and um, my Nicholas, he sat in it, and he immediately grabbed the controls. And pulled them straight off, oh. and I was like, ah! I was like, I went, oh. and so I looked behind. And I was like, don't worry, mate, I can fix that. I can fix anything. Give me some glue. But it was such a fantastic prop. I can't wait to see what they're gonna produce this year. And they've only had a year from their last one to, to build because they first of all they built this full scale attack. So I can't wait to see what they're gonna build this year. But that's in October, I think, this year this year so we'll be definitely going to that but jason um i would love to get you on the show live when you're at celebration if i give you a call you know on your break (laughs) because i don't want you to to lose out on any people buying your prints while you're on the phone to me but it'd be be great to get you actually there yeah that sounds like fun yeah we could i mean i got down i have downtime there i'm not you know, I don't have a line in front of my table like some of these other artists do. <laughs> and uh, so I, I'm sure I can find some time for you to do that for sure. And I might do I might do a Facebook Live thing as well. Oh, that would be awesome. I'll tell you what, Jason, you are our man on the scene. That would be fantastic. We would love it. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I will do that. Oh, that's sweet. Well, thanks again, Jason, for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. And you know you are, and I say this every every time you come on, you are welcome 
any time to come on. Thanks again, man, for having me. I really have fun on here. And uh, I will save a print for you. I promise. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, real quick, uh, if David Prowse is at any of those conventions coming up that you have there in London, please let me know, and I'm mm -hmm. going to send you my book for him to sign it for me, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is not a problem. I, I mean, I've got more stuff in my house signed by David Prowse than, uh, than anybody. In fact, it's probably uh, you'd probably be harder to find something that he's not signed Right, <laughs> I've yeah, he signs an awful I've lot yet stuff. had the chance to meet him. You know, he's never invited to celebration, which is a travesty. And it is. I just can't believe it's unbelievable. that. Why, why unbelievable. he's not? And I've just I've never been at a show where he's been to. So you know, it would be a huge, huge favor for you to do that for me, and I would owe you big time. For you, I will do anything. All right. Talking about David Browse. On Netflix, there's a documentary called I Am Your Father about David Prowse being in Star Wars and how he's been treated. Yeah, I watched that too. Yeah, it's a great, great film. I absolutely loved it just love that documentary and like i say uh, you've seen it so uh, so it's definitely on the on the american netflix as well yeah i highly recommend everyone to watch it it's a great great film it is very good it is great um so yeah jason where can our listeners find you and order one of your prints uh well you could go to my website which is jason w christman.com that's spelled like christman or christmas with an n or you could find me on instagram as a Star Wars artist. Even though I'm rarely on Twitter, I do post things occasionally on there and, and links, which is uh, Jason W. Christman on Twitter as well. So those are the three avenues. Where can we order your prints from again? You can order the prints. For pre-sale, it's going to be darkinkart.com, but there will be links on all my social media and websites as well. That's fantastic, Jason. Well, I look forward to hearing more from you and, and so with the listeners. So thanks a lot for coming on the show. All right, thanks. Talk to you later. Well, that was a fantastic uh, interview I had with uh, Jason. Um, mm -hmm. He's always a good chat, and, he, and um, I re really appreciate to hear that he, he approaches us to showcase yeah. his, uh, his artwork, and he's had a right good time at um, Emerald City. Uh, <laughs> whenever I think Emerald City, I always think Wizard of Oz, but it's, it's Emerald City Comic Con, of course. And this print, Paul, yeah. um, you, you've been looking at it while, we, while I did this interview, and what do you reckon to mm. it, Paul? Yeah, it's quite a nice. It's, it's a, like a silhouette um, styled image. Um, it's a print one uh, one of two hundred and fifty, so it's like a limited run. Mm. And you've got uh, six uh, char six characters in the foreground. It's, it's like a color palette of about probably eight or nine tones. Yeah, um, um, and the characters are which you probably heard in the in the interview is so you have got Dengar, you got uh, IG eighty eight, Boba Fett, Bosk, Forlom. And Zuckers, and they're in that uh, positions like in um, uh, the usual suspects, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, me, silhouette, yeah, yeah. Now, me and Jason, we we talked about this, uh, Prince, and so you probably so you've just heard my views on it, but you know, Paul, your views looking at it that's why I'm, I'm interested in you what you think of it. Yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite a striking kind of image. It's there's um, you've got Vader in the background there kind of uh, mm. just lurking yes <laughs> yes and it's uh it's it's entitled bounty hunter um so yeah it's just it just basically it, it's exactly what it says on the tin basically yeah. it's just a it's a complete you know it's a it's, um, an, it's a good mimilis one that he's done well he's yeah, the, is, he's yeah, the king of mimilis isn't yeah. he yeah um, so like i say it's a very limited like a, a blue blue color mm. palette but yeah it's uh I, I must admit i like i like the eye on ig88 on ig88 yeah yeah um yeah. um but it's fascinating that um, that he, you know, he's been picked out of the hundreds that submit. It's great that uh, R. Jason's been picked again for celebrations because he got picked. Do you remember the picture that he did last year, Paul, which um, he gave us a copy each, didn't he? Yes, yes, uh, I've the, still got the, that, the Death I've Star still got that rolled up. Yeah, mm. um, yeah. So um, I, I quite like his uh, his artwork. It's fantastic. Yeah. Mm. Uh, oh, what's that? Oh, it sounds like an old uh, analog telephone. Oh yeah, yeah, it's this one. <laughs> Hello, Radio Free Endor. Jamie speaking. Hello. Hello. What? Oh, it's just the holographic phone, and you asked me to change the ringtone on it. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No problem. That's oh, it's an incoming message from 
seems the captain. Oh, it's the captain of the Lost Ways, Paul. Let's have a listen. What okay. he wants to say. Here we go. Greetings. I am the captain. A little message to the earthly manifestations known only as Jamie and Paul. I do believe they sound like a most friendly and all-inclusive solicitor's company. One truly for the people. No surnames or no need for any grand titles adopted here. I'm not too familiar with many solicitors that conduct a practice such as that, especially on planet Earth. Though this is evolution, and it is happening right here and right now. One has finally got his brass interplanetary magnetic field inducer coordination generator fixed. That's easy for me to say, I hear you say. Though harder for you to repeat. I know. I do hope this show is on catch-up. I hear that Jamie and Paul are stuck for some music to play. So I am sending it directly now. <laughs> You'll find it in the same Dropbox link where the totality of oneself is found. In the click of a mouse, all existential woes would be revealed. A fruit salad full of florid blandiloquence and a vocabulary so ripe and infused with vitality. I dare say one should salivate with ears and eyes for this my sweet sonic offering. I bid thee farewell.
Well, that was a fantastic track by the captain of the Lost Waves. What a nice guy. Hey, and you never know, he might send us a whimsical review at some point, Paul. <laughs> That'd be quite good, isn't wouldn't it? it? He's very wordy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he is. He's got, a, I tell you what, he's, he's absolute. I've spoken to him before, apart from when we was at the market, of course. And uh, he's absolutely a, a diamond to speak to. And, uh, it, yeah. and, and of course... He gave us permission to play his track, uh, which we're grateful for. And we'll also stick in some links to uh, to his how to buy his CD and how you want to say a uh, whimsical hello to him too. And um, in fact, Paul, uh, we've just bought tickets to go and see him uh, in concert. Oh, okay. Yeah, me and Nicky have just uh, bought some tickets. Uh, so yeah. uh, that's in April, I think. We're going to go and see him. Uh, but um, <laughs> he's, uh, he's he's very much into steampunk, and um, he yeah. goes around to the steampunk uh, conventions and does his... his, <laughs> his I keep saying whimsical because I don't know how to describe the way he goes, you know, but he's L- lyrically, lyrically l- whimsical. Yeah, but it's fantastic, lyricist. and he was yeah. absolutely fantastic with Nicholas. And... Um, it inspired me to do these little steampunk hats that uh, Nick has been wearing. And some people from uh, my works, wives that go to these steampunk uh, festivals, they've been having some of me as well. And the hats. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, they've been having some uh, some hats off me. So, uh, so it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good, yeah. So, Paul, that just brings us to the end of the show. It's been quite a good show. There's been a lot in it, Paul. Yeah. yeah, A lot of news. You've been busy. (laughs) Been busy, yeah. Uh, Fantastic interview with Jason and fantastic bit of music by the Captain of the Lost Waves. Now, just before we go, Paul, we've been doing it a show at the end of the month, uh, as we normally do. But on the run-up to Star Wars Celebrations been lucky enough to grab a couple of more interviews from some more Star Wars artists that will be showcasing their artwork for Star Wars Celebration. There's a lot of Star Wars here, Paul. (laughs) Star Wars Celebration Orlando. Now, first of all, we've had our friend Jason W. Chrisman, who was an absolute Mm -hmm. dream. And already in the can, I've recorded an interview with Brian Miller. Next week, I'll be recording one with Jake Murray and been having a bit of a chat with him, Paul, and he's all raring to go. And he's he's already sent me a digital copy of his artwork and a couple of links, which I'll be forwarding on to you, Paul, and you'll be able to give me your reviews on them as well. Oh, so so that's it, basically. It's been another fantastic thing. It's always great to catch up with you, Paul. It's always great to catch up with our, with our audience as it's well. Been a stress, it's been a stressful month for It has, especially with you with your moulds and stuff. Oh, my <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, remember, you can show your love for this podcast with an official Radio Free Endor t-shirt available at Tee Public. Also, iTunes is the best way to download us. And while you're there, leave us a five-star review. Hey, Paul. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, that'd be great. You can also reach out to us on social media as on Instagram, Periscope, Twitter and Facebook but we don't use Periscope because it's, it's not that interesting <laughs> so no, it's not that. I hardly ever use <laughs> occasionally I might I think we'll use Periscope Paul if we go down to a convention you know we're yeah, together yeah. that'd be the best time to use it but saying that now Facebook's doing it there's no need for Periscope no, you know I mean? it, yeah. so anyway you can reach me uh, at Jamie underscore R underscore Burns you can find Paul at... At Cut and Run 22 or at Paul's Tweets. And we are... On Twitter. Yeah, on Twitter, yes. Yeah, sorry, Paul. Yeah. I almost jumped in that's that right, way. That's okay. Uh, that's at, okay. Radio Free, uh, at Radio Free... At Radio Free... There's a lot of ads, Paul. There's a back and ads <laughs> out of ads, you know. <laughs> and our email is radiofreeendor at gmail.com. Yeah. So that just leaves me to say goodbye and see mm. you next time quicker than you would normally. In that pool. That's it, yes, definitely. Yeah. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same here, Paul. It's been one of them evenings. It's it quite is. late here now. It's not 11 o'clock. Yes, it is. Here, We're so. both up here at five. Okay, I'll see you later, Sam. Take care. See you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye-bye. You. Like I said, right after. He took it. <laughs> Such a tease. 